Hi everyone, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and this tutorial is going to show you how you can use action points in Spryder and how it can benefit you in your video game engine. As you can see, for this example, I've taken art from the Radius Wing Shmup Pack Essentials version and constructed this spaceship. And I've made the ship so that it has two different modes, one where the four guns all shoot straight forward, and then there's a transformation animation to a second mode where the ship can shoot on the uh, more widespread diagonals. And then as you can see here, I made a very quick, very basic game engine where the ship can transform if you press one button. And as you can see in mode one, the shots go straight. In mode two, the shots are spread out. And if you keep firing during the transformation, the angle of the uh, bullets and the position from which they shoot are actually tweened right along with the animation. So of course the first thing I did was just take the image segments from the uh, Radius Wing Essentials art pack and assemble a ship and then I laid down bones so that I could eventually either move around or more importantly in this case animate the uh, different segments for the transformations and make sure the proper images were assigned to the proper bones. Now, what's important is before you go any further and before you start animating, you actually have to add the action points to the right places and assign them to the same bone as the image that you want the points to be placed on. So how do you create action points? What you do is you go up here to the top right, you'll see Alt plus click. And then by default, it's for creating bones, but you can left click and hold here and there's a little drop down menu so that you can pick either creating boxes or creating points. We want points. So now that I have that selected, I can zoom in. And now when I hold down alt and click and drag, I'm creating an action point and you'll see if you look carefully as I move the mouse around while I'm still holding the left mouse button, I'm setting the angle of the point. So we want them going for this animation. We want them going straight up and we want it to be extremely accurate. So once you've created your first action point, you should go in here. Uh, you just click on it and you'll see its properties over here. And among those properties, there will be angle and this should be exactly 90 degrees to go straight up. And then we're going to do the same exact process for the other three gun turrets. Here we go. Now that they're all definitely pointing straight up, it's really important to make sure that their placement is good. And now we need to make sure they're all assigned to the appropriate bone. So I'm going to select the bone for this one. Hold down B and carefully left click on that point and do the same thing. And then of course, to test each of them, you can just click and drag the bone there. You can see I did not successfully assign that child, so I'm gonna, that uh, action point as a child. So I'm gonna try that again. Click that bone, hold B, click the action point. There we go. So once that's all set up, you just create all of your animations and no matter what you do with those bones, the action points, which are representing the gun placements are going to move right along with them, as you can see. So once that's done, uh, you're just going to save that out and then uh, use it in whatever authoring system you're using that it would need to be able to support Spryder runtime APIs and specifically be able to support the action point feature. For the case of this example, I'll be using Construct2. So as you can see in the layout, I've imported the Spriter object, which generated all the sprites that it'll be using to animate the ship. I've also created a little simple looping background from an image I just stole from a Google image search and then made somewhat tileable. And then um, I created a standard Construct2 sprite, which has the actual eight direction movement for the uh, player to be able to control the ship. And then in the events, which is the logic for the game, I simply every tick set the position of the spider object to match the position of that green player block that actually moves around when the player controls it and i created an exhaust sprite a little animated exhaust sprite and a uh, which you can see here uh, which i also tell to basically always position itself right down at the bottom of the ship and i've created a shot sprite and it's important because we're going to be 
um, matching the angles of the action points, it's important to keep in mind, uh, just like in Spider and Construct 2, angles start, angle 0 is pointing directly from left to right, basically lying on its side. So now that I have all of the things that I need to get things working, I need to add to my logic. So here are the events that are really relevant. Here's the most important one for shooting. So I have if the X key is pressed, then I'm going to play the sound effect for shooting. And then I'm going to repeat four times. I'm going to basically create a loop that happens four times. And I'm going to create an object shot, which is the standard shot sprite, on layer one, which is the same layer the ship is on. So here's the part that gets a bit tricky. Remember, the spriter object is called point demo, and then object X is the X position of one of the objects within the spriter file, and I'll explain that in more detail later. So we're creating a shot sprite, and its position is going to be, the X position is going to be some retrieved object X, and then here is where we tell it what object's X position to retrieve so that we can put the shot in that same X position. And then we do the same exact thing for the Y position, object Y. So what is the object? If you look here, back in the Spriter file, if we go back to the original animations I made, when I made the points, I renamed them to be gun zero, gun one, gun 2 and gun 3 with an underscore between the name and uh, the number. So those are the objects. So those are the names we need to copy. Gun underscore 0, 1, 2, and 3. And by the way, here's how you rename them. I made another point out in the middle of nowhere called gun 5. All you need to do is either double click or right click and choose rename and then you can name the point whatever you'd like. But anyway, so that's the object. So we were retrieving gun underscore. Now, if you only had one sort of uh, gun turret, then you wouldn't need any kind of fancy formula like this. You could simply say, uh, create that sprite object on layer one, in this case, at point demo object X, and then it would just be that one name of your one point, like, gun underscore zero but in my case because i have four separate gun turrets and i want to just create one loop that creates all four shots and places them and angles them appropriately then i'm being a little more fancy so what i'm doing is creating the name using the string gun underscore because they all start with that and then i'm saying and we're going to add a string to that name which is loop index. So as you can see here, I have a action here that says repeat four times. So it's creating a loop. That's what the loop index is. The loop index is which iteration of the loop is this. So it's going to start at loop zero, or I should say loop index zero, the first time it goes through. And then the next time it's going to be one, two, and three. So as you can see, that is going to tell it which point to place the newly created sprite shot on. Sorry if that sounds a bit convoluted. It's just a quicker way, instead of having to make four different event lines or action lines to create all the different shots and set their angles, I just do it in one clean loop. And that way, let's say I wanted to add a fifth or a sixth gun turret, then all I would have to do is change this number to five or six and make sure my points are properly named a gun underscore five, gun underscore six. And then it would automatically just work and I'd have even more shots coming out of those new gun turrets. And as you can see on this action below, I'm doing the same exact thing, but now I'm retrieving the angle of an object from the point demo sprite object. So you can see point demo object angle, and then the formula I'm using to recreate the name of that particular point based on the loop index. So I'll do this all from scratch here. So I'm adding an action, then this pops up. And then I'm choosing the sprite for the shot, and I'm choosing set angle of motion. And then here it is asking for what angle I want to set it to. And then I need to use a formula or recreate that formula, I should, I should say. So I'm finding the spriter object. 
point demo, double clicking on that, and then you can see there's objects, and here's how I got object X and object Y for creating the, the shot in the right place, and then you see there's object angle, so I'm choosing object angle, and now it's asking me for the name, so I have to put it in quotes because it's supposed to be a string, and I'm choosing gun underscore, and then I'm moving over to the other side of those quotes I created because I want to add to it, so I'm using the and symbol. And then uh, now I need um, string. So I'm using the string uh, formula to convert a number I'm going to retrieve to a string. And then what number? The loop index. So I'm going system and under system loop index. So that's how I created that. And that's about it for this tutorial. I hope that made sense. Um, I should get rid of this extra set angle event now since I recreated it. So that's it for this one uh, for this video. Thanks very much for watching.